Expo, Melina Mike. Haven't seen you in a few hours. You've I can't be slack- tied down, man. You've been slacking off? I, I haven't been hitting balls all day long like you. I, I came by once, and you were in the middle of playing a deep game of eight ball by yourself, it looked like. And, uh, you know. Was that before or after I texted you that I can beat anybody in here in bar box eight ball? Uh, I was just feeling, I was feeling my oats. Yeah, before. yeah. Before? Yeah. I asked them to play some, and then I didn't get a response. Oh, I, I left you on unread? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, returning the favor. Huh? Well, hey, seriously, though, what were you doing out there? Oh, matches are going on. Um, let's see, filler, filler wins. Chang beats Albin. Uh, David snuck away with one there. It was about to go to a third set, and then Labuda scratches on like a seven ball. Uh, Mario, he, and Oliver are in a are in a knockdown one. I think it's about to be 2-2 in the third. Um, let's see here. Roland was on upset alert. It was 3-3 in the second set, and he already lost a set. I believe Federer might have lost. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he did. Really? Yeah. Um, I think Fortunsky lost. He walked out here. He did not look too happy. Well, Wichter, I mean, Did Wichter win that one? Oh, Wichter did win that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah in, in two sets, as a matter of fact. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Well, you know, one of the things we said this year is that we wanted to talk with some different people at the Expo, you know, not just professional players, but some of the amateur players. And, you know, uh, I was out here hitting balls the other day and and, a fella came up and introduced himself. And it's a bonus because not just is he an amateur player, but he's also pretty prominent in the industry. And so with that, I want to go ahead and first ask folks if they could uh, just let us know if you can hear us and see us okay. Uh, I don't see anything in the chat yet, so I just want to make sure everything's good. Uh, but we're going to bring in Stuart Rogers from Sydney, Australia. Uh, he's on the board of the WPA. That's not why he's here today. Oh, we're wonderful. Get the, no, no, get that's the, perfect. Oh, yeah. here we go. That's perfect. Oh, straight under the bus. Thanks, Joey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought we were going to leave that till the yeah, end. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's an exciting thing. You know, yeah. the, the WPA um, obviously is the governing body for pool. It's an important job, and so we will leave that till the end. So why don't you start with just giving us a little bit of your background, Stuart? Okay, great. Well, firstly, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Um, I'm a BCA League operator in uh, Sydney, Australia, and um, <clears throat> I started importing diamond pool tables probably about 10 or 12 years ago. So I know the guys at Diamond, Chad and Brian and Paul and all the boys. So uh, I went out to their factory as well and sort of learned how to... Uh, recover a pool table uh, that was quite interesting especially uh, out in the back of their factory which was, it was like a 40 degree day so it was pretty <laughs> hot um, in a warehouse wait yeah, wait yeah. wait 40 degrees celsius yes, yes okay yes yeah. yes so sorry yeah it I was forget. hot guys not oh, yeah. cold. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. it was hot yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> Sorry, I keep forgetting about that, guys. Yeah, um, there's a lot of those little unique things, right, with Australia and the United States and yep. things we just take for granted or don't think about when we're talking to somebody from other places. That's right. I mean, half the time when uh, I talk to Americans and they say to me, oh, we'd love to go to Australia, we're going to come over in July. And I go, why are you coming over in July like this? And they say, well, that's summer. And I go, it's not summer there where winter. we are. It's winter. So <laughs> I said, you know Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah you absolutely. don't know how the hemispheres work, Melina? Mm, I, I do not. I right. do I'm not. the one with the geography degree, Stuart. Okay. So All right, no worries. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I would have been one of those Americans, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I um, did uh, started up the BCA Pool League, met uh, Mark Griffin, uh, the late, great Mark Griffin. That was a good friend of mine, and uh, he helped me uh, along the way. So, uh, kudos to to uh, to Mark. You know, I miss him. He's a, he's a friend, and uh, terrible loss for the industry. Agreed. Um, yeah. I actually went over to Griffs and spoke to some of his managers because obviously, you know, it all happened so fast, and and we were just chatting, and um, yeah, we had just seen Mark in. In December at the Moscone Cup, we was, we were doing shows in the evening there at Griff's, and I think Mark had walked in the first night we were there, and I mean he looked great, you know. I mean he, he was made, walking around, he looked. I mean, made fit, sure we were taken care his of. His face, internet, like, everything, everything was just, everything was just fine about him. And then it was like we leave a few weeks later, and then we heard the tragic news. Yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a sad day, and. Uh, I'm glad that the, uh, I know obviously Aussie, Aussie and Amy and their team, you know, have certainly put up some, uh, some large, you know, banners and yeah. everything in his, in his memory and, uh, and that was really nice to see. I, uh, I believe he's going to be in, I think CSI starting a, a Hall of Fame and sure. Mark's going to be in it as far as I understand. Should be. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Worthy, worthy uh, recipient. So, um, 
So yeah, so uh, back to a little bit of my profile then, um, I, I was playing in the league, I was running the league, um, we had about 60 teams all playing on diamond tables. Um, we have a very unique format um, which we created, um, which the guys at Fargo Rate, uh, when we transitioned over to Fargo Rate, absolutely um, uh, were pulling their hair out trying to figure out how to do it. <laughs> what is it? Okay, so we use what we call a scalp system. Okay. So Joey's Fargo is what six ninety odd. Okay, yeah. I'm I'm five forty. So what we do is we have a, a system where um, we, if him and I play, he will win points based on the differential between our Fargo. Okay, but it's only a twenty point system. So we have twenty points on offer. So that's up for grabs, and then it's based on a sliding scale of the differential between. If we're a hundred points difference, it might be, uh, you know. 15, 15 points to the higher Fargo and five points, sorry, uh, yeah, 15 points if you beat the higher Fargo and five points if you the higher Fargo beats the lower Fargo. So it's a risk versus reward system. And what we found was um, most of our matches came down to the last couple of games and we found that there was a lot less sandbagging and um, the players really enjoyed it because everybody from, we had a, we had a gentleman playing, he was a 760 Fargo in our league. 760? Yeah, yeah. Who's he, that? Uh, Justin Sage, he'd know, you okay, guys yeah, know yeah, Justin. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Justin so, plays great. Yeah, yeah, so he was playing in our league and um, I finally told him, look mate, it's time to give it a rest. Uh, <laughs> you know, you've been, you've been robbing the locals. Um, I mean, he's a great guy, Justin, uh, you know, and... Uh, he was here last year. I don't know if he's here this year, but he was here last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was here also too when COVID shut it all down and yeah. he got off the plane, got here, hit about five balls on a practice table, walked up to the bar and said, oh, it's all been shut down. So he's had to get back on a plane the next day. He wasn't a happy camper, let me tell you. Well, I can imagine. Well, Stuart, I know you kind of bring folks over from your league yeah. uh, to the CSI Expo, and I, I, we were talking before we got on air about the events. Uh-oh, there went my thing. Hold on. We were talking about the events of the year that it got shut down. So share a little story about what that was like. Well, um, well, we all travelled over here. We had about 45 players. Um, I, I own a company actually called QWell, which is an online billiard store in uh, Australia. Okay. Um, and we sponsored Darren Appleton. Okay, nice, uh, nice. We sponsored Darren for about three years. Um, and oh, it's like a yellow logo, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, it. Oh, yeah. very good. Thank you. Uh, I'm not wearing it today, so that's fine. <laughs> good job, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no free plug. Um, yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, so we came over here and we had... Uh, what, what is it, Stuart? Just buying and selling cues yeah, and yeah, all things yeah. all things pool yeah, related? Yeah, pretty okay. much, yeah, yeah. I mean, because we import the diamond tables and the rasson tables... Um, you know that gave us even you know more capacity to to make a few extra dollars and keep the game going. You know with people buying the equipment. I mean people only buy a new queue every once in a while. Right. So you know it's you know you sort of I've always worked towards especially beginning players. Hey you know try a players queue, try a Viking queue, get yourself started, and then when you get better, then we'll tell you when you're ready for a predator or a Q tech or, or something like that. You know you don't want to you know some guys have got all the cash and no idea how to play and they come in and spend thousands of dollars and it's like they're playing golf and you know all gear no idea sort of thing so <laughs> so yeah i try to steer people away from that um it's kind of like, opposite of what most people do actually yeah like at least here in the states yeah okay. the majority of the time yeah, yeah, yeah well i i prefer for them to feel that that there is a uh, a technological advancement that's sort of in line with their ability rather than just getting the best and wouldn't even know what the difference is. Right. So it's a bit more of a, I suppose, an honesty policy that we have. Um, I'm sure they appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, they do. Absolutely. I've got a lot of fans and, and got a lot of customers and, uh, you know, very happy to be uh, in the industry. Um, so back to, back to Vegas. Um, yeah, so we came over, we had about 40 or 50 players. We took a massive photo with all of us there and um, with Darren and he did a coaching clinic coaching clinic sorry um, we also had a, a major news uh, broadcaster uh, ABC News which is an Australian broadcasting company um, they followed one of our players who um, was on a TV program that was talking about um, it was called love on the spectrum and it was about people that uh, you know might have had Asperger's or some other sort of uh, you know mental 
um, difficulties um, mm -hmm. uh, and how they would, you know, find a partner and how would they live their life. And this young fellow, um, he loves pool. He plays in our league, and you know, we've sort of adopted him as our own. And uh, he came, and they followed him all around, and. We had the cameras there. I had them ringing me, you know, two days before we're about to leave, saying, "Oh, could, do you mind if we tag along? Can you organise media passes?" I'm saying, "What? Where's, <laughs> wow. the list, where's the list come from?" So I'm giving, you know, midnight calls to Aussie and saying, "Hey, can you help me out? Who do I talk to?" And uh, uh, he was great, very supportive, and uh, yeah, they followed him around, and it got on our national TV, so you actually see the event. But that was during COVID, so that was whenever yeah. it got shut down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm just telling you the good stuff leading yeah. up to the leading up to the uh, the bad stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we were here. Um, we had a great time. We got through to uh, probably about three quarters of the way through the singles events. A lot of our players, um, quite a few of our players, got to uh, quarterfinals, semifinals, and then bang, it got shut down. Jeez. And then I was I was madly on the phone to. Uh, my travel agent back in Australia, and I'm saying, what time is it there? And he goes, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. I said, mate, we're gonna get out of here. They're shutting this place down. And uh, he was fortunate enough, he managed to get all of our flights, everything done within two hours and said, wow. you're all booked for tomorrow. Get the hell out of there, sort of thing. So, wow. uh, unbelievable. We, yeah, we took about 30 of us back. We all jammed into a massive limousine. I said, right, well, if we're going to go. Let's go out with a bang. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we we all piled in and we all went to the airport. And you know, there were, there was you know, pretty uh, some sad faces, but ultimately, you know, what it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, right. that type of stuff. And uh, you know, we'll come back. Um, it's been a tough tough COVID couple of years for everybody you know I'm not sort of putting on the sob story for the poor Australians but uh, uh, it's very expensive to travel to Vegas for us um, I don't think anyone really truly realizes how much money and effort goes into us coming here give us an idea well firstly it's about a 15 hour straight flight from Sydney to LA or San Fran so you're effectively flying in a beer can for, for 15 hours. Uh, my back's already tightened up just here and there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you're going to get a couple of hours from LA or whatever it is. Um, I personally fly to Hawaii and then have a stopover and then go from Hawaii to Vegas. Um, Smart move. Yeah, I find, <laughs> I, f I find the actual customs and everything at Hawaii pretty relaxed. Whereas you go to LA or something like that, not only is it you know, a massive airport, uh, people are a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit less accommodating, I think. So... Uh, <laughs> Um, so anyway, I, uh, yeah, we come over. So flights cost us about uh, two thousand Australian dollars, and you've got to understand Australian dollars are where we're getting about seventy cents on the dollar with the American dollars. Mm -hmm. So everything adds up. And yeah, wow. definitely. Then you've got your uh, accommodation. So you're usually up for about two grand there. So that's four thousand. And then before you, you hit, before you even take a bite to eat, huh? Yeah, well, we haven't even paid for our entries yet. Yeah. yeah. So add another, say, thousand for our entries, maybe fifteen hundred. So you're up to five and a half, and then you've got, as you say, trying to live. You know, whether it's a hundred US dollars a day or whatever. So you could, all told, you could be out of the door seven thousand dollars. That's incredible, and you get you were able to bring a group of thirty people over. Fifty. 50 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm wow. a good salesman, so, you know. <laughs> No, but they love it. I mean, they, they, they well, love the camaraderie, you know. I think it speaks to the enthusiasm of the Australian pool community, which I know very little about. And so I'd really like to hear about what it's like in Australia, what the pool community is like. I know you have the BCA League there, but sure. if I were going to go visit and I wanted to hit some balls, you know, tell me what I can expect when I go to Sydney or Melbourne or <coughs> places like that. Well... You know, we don't have nearly the population, you know, uh, that any of the other countries. I think we've got like 26 million people. So, and we're very geographically isolated in the sense of from the rest of the world. Right. Um, uh, so, which actually probably did us favour when COVID hit, you know what I mean? Because it was pretty easy to close the borders and no one could come in. But uh, when you're talking about pool, um, well, there's a few different disciplines of, of Q sports in Australia. Uh, one is snooker. So that's the 12... 12 by 6 tables uh, with the 15 reds and the, and the colours. Um, I don't think snooker's you know, highly played in the US, but I'm sure there's a few. I think Corey Jewell plays it and a few others. Yeah. Um, and then that's sort of been the staple for most people when they started in Q Sports because snooker tables are put into what they call RSL clubs, which are return servicemen's clubs, so you know, vet clubs or, or, or what, what have okay. you. Uh, return veterans so um, and they're free for people to go and learn and how to play 
Um, so you'd find that if you looked at any pool player that comes to America, our stance, our bridge, everything's a lot different. You know, a lot of us don't use the loop bridge. Yeah. A lot of us use the open bridge. Um, you know, we're pretty compact. Even from their legs, the, yeah. their, yeah, their base, I mean, everything. You can tell fundamentally. Yeah. yeah, so our fundamentals are actually quite strong. Compared, Agreed. You know, um, you know, we're not like the Filipinos with that really loose... Uh, action and all the body English that they use. Yeah, they, um, they play terrible. Uh, no, I don't say that. I'm not <laughs> saying they play terrible, but I'm just talking about, you know, the yeah, differences. The you style, know. yeah. Yeah, they're just, a, just a different style. But um, so, uh, so you've got snooker, and then you've also got another game called uh, English Pool, uh, which is uh, 15 balls. So it's still on a, on, a, on a bar size table, but we have rounded pockets, so like snooker. Um, we have uh, seven reds and seven yellows, so there's no numbers. So like English eight ball? Yeah, English oh, eight okay. ball. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, English pool, English eight ball. Um, and then you've got, obviously, a smattering of American pool throughout, throughout uh, Australia. Um, we have some pool halls, uh, not a lot. Uh, predominantly, they're made up with snooker and English eight ball and some American pool. Uh, the reason I got into American pool was because I felt like it was a growth market there wasn't a lot there so we've been slowly and surely chipping away at that and you know New South Wales or Sydney um, is probably the base for American pool and some of the other states like Melbourne Victoria um, Queensland and uh, South Australia they they have pool halls with American tables yeah so it sounds like um, you know it's kind of similar here we have well we have pool rooms we have pool halls but we also have something called a VFW, Veterans of Foreign Wars. And in there, almost every one has pool tables, every one that I've been in. And it's a great environment. Like, they have one out by where I used to live in Maryland. They get tournaments going and things like that. So you're saying that most of the American pool would probably be found in those locations in Australia? They'd only be found in commercial pool halls. But but, but, but also, too, as a, as a potentially for myself, like as a diamond importer, I, I've brought in about 50 smart tables. Oh, nice. So, I, so I'm a coin-operated vendor. So I go out to the little small bars and, and clubs and try to put a couple in, and then that's where I sort of build my league base from and get people playing. What, what would you say, like, the pool IQ is in Australia for those tables that you put into bars and places? You know, here it's, it's really varied. You go into some places, they're still playing, like, Honest Try 8-Ball and... You know, um, it's just different. You know, you go other places and it's it's very structured. Like, yeah, we play ball in here and here. We do certain things. What are like the house rules in Australia? Uh, <laughs> well, we call them Rafferty's rules. You never really know what you're going to get until you get in there. <laughs> um, so, uh, look, every, every club is different. I mean, the first thing you learn as a pool player is when you get to the table, right, what are the rules? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you know it's going to be varied everywhere. Generally, you find if you have an American pool table, you'll find that the culture will be, you'll have a couple of guys who really love American pool or WPA related disciplines, and then they'll, they'll sort of push, you know, the ball in hands, the, you know, what we would consider the correct rules on how to play the game. Uh, that doesn't mean it always works, but generally we find most people will sort of toe the line and get on. And a lot of people, they've played on like the English uh, eight ball tables, they've played on um, uh, say uh, hybrid, type tables that you know got really thick cloth and really slow and all the rest of it and you give them a diamond table and they think oh, what have I been playing on yeah, for the last five yeah. years you know yeah. they go this table's fantastic but the one comment we always get is these balls are so big you know like what's going on <laughs> so I go well they do everything bigger in America so uh, I said that's what you get but um, no 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 it's it, it the pool IQ is I guess uh, varied, varied across the board. So we got some comments in here. Uh, James Brinson wants to know what your high run in snooker is. 68. It's not bad. Oh yeah, that was back when I was actually playing quite a bit. Um, you know, probably my misspent youth. You know, not doing anything <laughs> and just uh, yeah, 68 I think, and that was on a really tough table too. So, uh, uh, but I know a lot of the top snooker players in Australia. Uh, you know, uh, not some of them personally, but most of them I do. And these guys are knocking in, you know, one, four, sevens and, and stuff like really? that. Really? Oh, yeah, 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 wow. yeah. That's one of, awesome. One of our coaches, uh, Greg Jenkins, he's knocked in two one four sevens. Um, Craig Riley was an English um, eight-ball player and, a, you know, very highly ranked um, over there in the, in the UK uh, tour. So he was, he was, he's a great snooker player. 
Um, obviously, Neil Robinson, you know, won the yeah, World Championship. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, and we've got legends like uh, Walter Lindrum and things like that for English billiards. So we've actually got a pretty proud heritage when we actually think about Q Sports. We're very underrated. You know, yeah. um, a lot of our guys uh, don't probably get as many opportunities because we, it is so costly and it's ge we're geographically isolated and things are just going up and up and up in cost. So it yeah. makes it really hard for our guys to get a, a real, you know, uh, they, they need to go to Europe, they need to go to the US and, and get on the tour and even Asia. Well, to, now that, uh, like, I know Matchroom is doing events in Asia, do you foresee any players from Australia going to, like, the Asian Open and events like that? <coughs> well, I think the last Asian Open was just Asian players, I, I think. I think so. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, yeah. there was no, well, like, international, outside of Asian players uh, yeah. allowed. That's I think this one, I think this one is uh, allowing, yeah. yeah, allowing those players, so... Um, I would find that um, we may see some. Um, we've got three of the three of our guys coming for the pro event, so we've got three coming for the world ten ball. So we've got uh, Sed Gonzalez. Um, he's from Western Australia. He's about a 700 Fargo, just shy of 700. Uh, John Wims. Um, he's twice Oceanic champion, uh, Irish player, uh, but he's obviously he's an Australian citizen now. Um, he's a uh, seven, just under 700, and um, James Georgiatis, uh, who played in the uh, Alpha, um, and he's also playing as well in the World Ten Ball. So we've got three guys here. So I think it really just comes down to cost. Yeah, to, to be honest. Sounds uh, like and Corn Pop here in our chat is suggesting you guys need more sponsorship to get these players. Like, you know, if I'm going to travel to New Jersey to play in a tournament. I need to come up with a couple thousand dollars. You know, these guys have to come up with almost ten. Yeah. Really? So, pretty significant. <laughs> so, uh, you're competing here. You're actually playing in some of the events. How's it going so far? Me? Uh, yeah, not too bad. I played in the uh, the fair match uh, singles. There was 193 entries, came ninth. Hey, Seg Gonzalez is in here. He said, I'm on my way, Stu. Yeah, he said, come on down, my man. <laughs> it's your shout at the bar, brother. Um <laughs> So yeah, so um, yeah, we're. Uh, I did it okay. Yeah, I got ninth. I, I came runner up last time. Uh, I played in it, but uh, it was a smaller field, as you and I were talking about. Played in the Scotch doubles uh, with my friend uh, Rob Carnell of Carnell Cues. He's a custom cue maker in Australia. Um, I could tell you plenty of funny stories about him, but I won't. <laughs> um, and uh, we came ninth in that one as well. And now I'm playing in the gold uh, division for the for the eight ball singles and then we've got the nine ball teams and then we've got the eight ball teams. Wow. And Busy that, schedule. Well, you have to. I mean, we, we really Get need your money's worth while get, you're here. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I've made a bit of cash as well, which is good and uh, I'm not a gambler, so um, I don't gamble. I just walk past the tables. I haven't... It's too costly to come here as it is, so I didn't exactly want to give Vegas any more of my money. <laughs> that makes sense. So, thinking about your role now on the board of the WPA, uh, I wouldn't even know how to kind of get connected with the WPA if I had that, those aspirations. How did that come about? How did you, how did, you know, <coughs> tell us well, about how that... Well, I'm the chairman of the Australian Pool Players Association. Um, I've picked up from the previous administration. It was uh, probably needed a bit of a, a rework. Um, so I've been running that for two years as, the, as a sort of the president, I guess, for Australia. Um, and been trying to steer the ship, you know, in the right direction. And um, Is that like a federation? Yeah. So do, you, do yeah. you help sponsor the players to get out here? Correct, yeah. Well, okay. we, we, we run national events, and then the, basically the winners of the national events will generally get the spots. That's generally how we like to do it. And then obviously as we raise money out of the prize fund, we also take a, you know, we take a clip to just keep our running costs going. And then if we have some excess funds, we'll try to support those players and say, hey, we'll pay your entry fee or we'll help you towards your flights or we'll try and help them raise sponsors and things like that. Is there any government help with no, uh, players no, out there? No, we're not, we're, not, we're not big enough yet, uh, to be quite honest. Um, it's something that we're working towards, but it's like working with governments, like, you know, working with a glacier, you know, it takes a long time for things to happen. <laughs> so, um, you yeah, know, we'll get there. Um, Ultimately, um, I'm also the president. It hasn't been announced, but it's going to be announced shortly. I'm, I'm the president for Oceania, which means I run Australia and New Zealand. So New Zealand are our our neighbours. Um, they've got some great great players over there. You've got Sullivan Clark, Matt Edwards. Um, yeah. You know, and I'm 
I'm not I'm not uh, ignoring anyone if I forget your name, so don't <laughs> don't, don't take it the wrong way, guys. Um, hey, I'm happy we got breaking news on the Dogness show. It yeah. hasn't been announced yet, but it was announced here. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so um, I, I I'm actually uh, uh, an, a friend of uh, Mr. Ian Anderson, um, who was the president of the WPA for some time. Uh, I think almost 20 years, um, and. Uh, him and I have chatted on the phone quite a lot. You know, we've talked about things, and I think it became a bit of a, you know, a conversation around. Look, I think it's time to move. You know, we need some fresh blood in there. And he said, "Well, people need to put their hand up." And I said, "Well, I'm putting my hand up." You know, I mean, I guess I'm in a unique situation where I actually have his phone number, and he rings me and he asks me about things, and we chat and discuss. Um, and you know, I've stepped into um, when he stepped away uh, and resigned after 20 years of service, um, you know, which, you know, for good or bad, whether you love him or you hate him, he's been there and he's done the job, you know, for 20 years, and that, that needs to be what, recognised. What would you say that job is? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if you... I don't think you guys have player associations here in America. Well, we have the, the BCA, but... Well, yeah, that's a trade, fe- yeah, that's yeah. A trade federation. Yeah. So, so f- f- when you actually run an organisation like that, it's all volunteer work. Okay, so you do it for free. It's for the love of the game. It's to organise your national events. It's to interact with um, sponsors, venues, and general organisation of the sport so that people have a governing body. So if there is a dispute, or you've got drug testing, you know, water responsibilities, things like that, you have a body of people that are going to be helping the sport flourish and, and, and work within the confines that it's been set, you know, from the higher ups if you, if you want to call it that right. which is obviously the WPA the World Confederation of Billiard Sports so it, it, you give up a lot of your time and your effort for nothing you know you're just doing it to, to help the sport just like you guys you know I mean you're trying to look for your Patreons and, and, yeah. and all the rest of it to try and you know pay for all the gear and and yeah. you know upgrades and all the rest of it and you know your travel costs and all the rest of it I mean you know you're doing it for the love of the sport as well um uh, whilst trying to build a brand and, and, and all the rest of it. So we're just, uh, I suppose, less commercialized, you know what I mean, I guess. Yeah, so so you're new in your role there, so yeah. obviously we can't put you too much on the hot seat. You're just getting a, acquainted there with the position and, <laughs> and the job. Yeah. Uh, but I'm curious, I I think you we talked earlier and you said that you had some ideas, uh, you know, things that, you know, maybe WPA could do better. And, oh, God, yeah. You know, not, not to speak out of turn or get you in any kind of hot water or anything, but I'm curious to, to know maybe an idea or two that you're thinking sure. maybe the WPA I, could do. I think, I think one of the things is the WPA doesn't really have a brand, okay? People don't even know who the WPA are. They don't know who the board members are, really. They, yeah, Kelly Fisher's on the board. We know Kelly. You know, we know Shane from, from the BCA, you know. Um, I'm an unknown. You know, people are going to go, who's this bloke? You know what I mean? And that's fine. I don't mind. I, I'm, I'm happy to be the, the guy that comes in. But what I would say is, you know, our website needs an overhaul. Our communication and marketing needs a complete overhaul because people need to feel like, yes, we're a governing body, but... We also need to be able to have conversations with guys just like you or any other organisation that want to talk about things that are happening. Um, so I think I think marketing and, and um, growing the sport is important. You know, there's obviously a bit of friction going on at the moment between various parties. I didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, well, I can assure you, stepping in, uh, you know, as a sort of almost feeling like a deer in headlights let me tell you but uh, there is there is a lot to learn um, and you know there's a lot of information that is um, you know quite sensitive Uh, so what we need to do now is work towards I think repairing some of those friendships relationships whatever you want to call it because you know that's important to to the sport because you know it it's all about the sport. It's it's not just about the players. It's not just about the sponsors. It's not just about the promoters. It's actually about the sport. And people need to look beyond their own, I suppose, agendas. Now, that's my honest opinion. What would you feel their role is going forward? Because at least for a lot of people's eyes, it looks like they've just been taking a slice over the last few years, and we really don't see them very much. We really don't see them accomplish very much they'll put their stamp on things they'll take their five percent or whatever it is out of out of winnings 
and then it's uh, you know, hey, we're a WPA sanctioned event. Yeah. You know? I mean, I can see that that's a very simplified ver- simplified version of of what you might think is going on, but um, it's like anything, you know. Um, you've always got to walk uh, a few miles in someone else's shoes. Yeah, to understand. but if, if they're not doing a good enough job of communicating what their role is, that's nobody. Like, you can't blame perception or optics if you're if. If you're not up front. Well, I think that was his first point. He said marketing, but I think it's also a little transparency. Would really help if folks kind of knew what was going on there, and I think that might be part of the problem. Correct. I mean, I I believe that um, when you have a person in the role for as long as they have, and they potentially, whilst they may seek advice, they still have their own way of doing things. Right. So I think with a bit of change management, it's like anything, you know, you... You get a new captain of the ship, you scrape off the barnacles, you set a new course, right? And, and that's what the WPA is going to be doing. I can assure you of that because I've been speaking to the new president of Sean. I've been speaking to Shane. Yeah, we had it, Sean on, and I think Shane Tyree will probably will be over here later in the week as yep. the World 10 ball finishes up. So I'm sure we'll have yeah. Shane on at some point as well. Absolutely. And, you know, we love to... Uh, we, we, we love to grill Shane whenever we can. He, he, he's a fun guy. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, I don't mind, I don't mind some of the hard questions. Um, you know, Shane I don't, said no way. Yeah. <laughs> God, Shane. Backpedal, Shane. Listen, Backpedal, listen, Shane. Listen, man. Look at that. Look at that. He's, hey. he's always watching. He's yeah. always watching. He is watching. And I can yeah. guarantee you one thing. He's going to be wearing a sport coat when he comes in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. There you go. Good on you, Shane. <laughs> yeah, I don't do sport coats, mate. Um, so, um, no, one of the things, yeah, I think you guys are right in the sense that it, perception is, is the optics needs to be improved. Right. I totally get that. Like, and I guess that's what I meant by marketing Maybe that's where brand. you would get more patience from people or more understanding or more appreciation, you know, yeah, even, yeah, you yeah. know? I mean, people don't know the costs that, that, that actually is incurred by the WPA. You know, um, there's legal costs. Uh, you know, there's drug testing. They're extremely expensive, the drug yeah. tests. I mean, you know... Um, I was flabbergasted at the price, you know, and, and that these things actually need to be done to, uh, you know, have official sanctioning from the World Confederation and WADA, our, our commitment to WADA. So, you know, these things are important and they're probably things that are behind the scenes that the players don't even know anything about unless they're being tapped on the shoulder and said, hey, you've been selected, come over here and, you know, into the bathroom and all the rest of it with the, with the WADA uh, uh, personnel. So those things cost, I think they're about... 1200 bucks a test and if you've got to do eight tests no let me tell you i can find back home i can find your drug test for a good you know 35 dollars from the we're not talking about a covid test okay (laughs) (laughs) so uh no these things have to be done in very strict protocols you know because people have you know legal rights to be able to come back and say hey i want to get a b test and that costs more money and then if they want to fight it then there's even legal costs on top of that so you know until you know until you really know um, so, in a nutshell, yeah. what would you say the WPA does for the professional game? Well, they really provide governance. So, I mean, one of the things that needs to we work need to work harder on is making sure that the promoters are not stepping on top of each other. That's the one thing. Yeah, it's a big issue. Well, that's right going to be it's going to be a little tougher. One of them, you know, stretching their elbows out a little bit and saying we're on our own. Yeah. Oh, well, I know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that's going to happen forever. Um, Let's just put it that way. Um, you know, you've got, you know, we need all the promoters we can. We need to build the sport. That's as simple as that. So so the WPA, you know, needs to work with these promoters, try to find a way to make it work for all parties. Um, you know, and we need to also have a bit of, we need to have, be able to have some teeth and we need to be able to have the players support us. I mean, it's quite a difficult situation when an event is placed into a calendar, it's been booked, and then another event goes on over the top or very close by, and players have got to make a choice. You can't have that sort of stuff. Um, you know, people need to work around as best we can. Now, I know there's plenty of factors that are involved in things like, you know, TV broadcasting, schedules, and, you know, say for argument's sake, match room. They, do, they don't just do pool, they do all these other sports as well. So, you know, they've got their own complexities in their own business. Yeah. But, you know, there's still people here trying to grow the sport and they need to be able to work together uh, because you know we, we need to we can't just rely on two promoters we actually need more we want to make it appealing for them to bring in more dollars into the sport well i mean to be fair you know on the wpa standpoint i love the idea of bringing in more but you know you guys can barely handle you know 
getting two of them to play nice with one another, let alone if there were more if there were more hands in that cookie jar. Well, you know, at yeah. least when it comes to like the top shelf of the professional game. Well, you know. yeah, but you know, <coughs> s- some some promoters will work with you, and some potion yeah. pr- promoters yeah. are a, a little bit more um, uh, focused on what they want to do, and uh, that can make life difficult. But there's still plenty of other promoters out there that might want to get involved um, and and see the way it should be done. I mean, this is a great event here um, at the BCA Expo. You've got the World Ten Ball. You've got all of the uh, amateurs. Uh, you know, running around, getting to see all the top pros. I mean, it's a fantastic event. I mean, it's the, the way it should be done. Yeah. Um, a lot of these pro events, you know, they're, um, they're, they've are they been tacked on, you know, they've been tacked on to tours and things like that where it's just got a stamp on it. But is it really, truly a matchroom event? You know, let's be honest. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the qualifying points. Yeah, yeah. System, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, <clears throat> I think we need a, a proper... I think the ranking system, there's a bit of work to be done on that as well to make sure that it's, it's fair for everyone and that, you know, like you think about an Australian player, how many matchroom events could they honestly go to to get enough rankings points to get in the top 100? How much would it cost them? Yeah. It cost them a fortune. But, you know, we're here in Australia for argument's sake and I've, I've, I've sort of digressed a little bit away from the WPA, but, you know, you think about it as a, as a player in this region, Oceania region, it's very difficult to... Uh, get around and how many events would you need to go to to um, to sort of make that top 100 yeah but I think a lot of people have it's like anything else you got to get creative you know I, I understand wanting to get more assistance when it comes to certain things and you know everything in the world's going up but you know where there's a will there's a way I mean I've seen a, a you know 13 year old Savannah Easton travel all over the country you know and, and she does a great job of marketing herself and has grown as not even ble- being a you know 760 player, you know what I mean, and just it, it, it's figuring out ways and 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 thinking outside the box. I feel like more so than just hey, you know, we're in a rut here. We're you know we need we need a little bit more. Oh, Savannah's a <coughs> Savannah's a great example of someone that has gone out there and and you know marketed it herself. I'm a, you know I'm a fan, um, but you know also too she's young, she's fearless, she's got a, her family behind her. Um, you know, like someone like Justin, for argument's sake, he's a full-time accountant. You know, do you think he can take time off work at tax time? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's got his normal day to job. He's, you know, he's got to pay his mortgage. Savannah, as lovely as she is, she's a kid. And it's great that she's there, but the reality is <laughs> she doesn't have those, those uh, you know, she doesn't have those real-life things. She's just got to worry about school. Yeah. Yeah. No, these are interesting topics to discuss, and I think... You know, from our standpoint as people who talk about the game and have kind of last several years really been immersed in it, we would love to see the WPA succeed because then all of these other entities there working together would make a better environment for the players. And so so our line of questioning is not to, like, gotcha, but it's really just to understand. Unless Shane's on here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> it's to understand kind of the dynamic now and hopefully where it can go because we don't want to see Josh Filler post that I couldn't get back in time from Vegas to play in Premier League pool, you know, or other players that like miss other events because of the scheduling conflicts. We started seeing that last year when we were here. Yeah. I think that's the first time we started seeing these conflicts come up. And look, it's a lot better than a few years ago when there wasn't a lot to play in. Sure. There's a lot to play in right now, and I think the – the importance of having some entity, some governing body, is probably greater now than it was several years ago. Well, uh, we got an a, a interesting question from Mike and um, uh, Barry's Digest. Interested to hear your perception of what the WPA does for promoters that the promoters themselves can't do on their own. Well, they give them a set of guidelines to start with um, that are, that are, that are um, you know, recognized throughout the world. Um, they should really be trying to uh, give them security on that event in the sense that you know the date is set that the event is going to happen Um, you know the the WPA has things like you know escrow accounts you know if you're a brand new promoter for argument's sake and you want to come into the scene well let's say Karim wants to hold a tournament for argument's sake on the on a date and he set a date a new promoter comes into the scene well, who are we going to be giving priority to? We're going to be giving a priority to someone that we've 
we've actually got a relationship with, who's done the events and is doing the events on a more regular basis, is stumping up the money. And um, so I think there's a couple of answers there. What else would you like to ask? Uh, I don't know. It's a little... Guidelines are a little rough for me. You know, you think about rules. There's, you mentioned it just in your in your own country. You know, different variations of eight ball. It's no different in, in professional pool. You know, whether we're putting the one on the spot or the nine on the spot. Who's, yep. If you're going to be racking with a template, if you're going to be racking with you know with with the triangle rack, for me that's hard to sell me on. You know, the other idea of you know protecting dates. And we've already seen things you know be on top of one another or close to while matchroom was still under that umbrella yeah i think that even, was even that was more so damaging. now that was kind of damaging to you guys yeah because of course. Absolutely. you had matchroom and uh matchroom scheduled over uh well i don't know well, it wasn't matchroom. direct it wasn't direct Let, it was close to there was scheduling conflicts between matchroom and predator when they were both participating in predator slash tsi both participating with wpa uh, WPA sanctioning. So when that happened, I think a lot of people were like, what the heck? That's not supposed to happen. No, you it's know? not. And so I think that, that kind of hurt a little bit. Of course it does. I mean, it shouldn't happen. It's as simple as that. Um, you know, there's no new... I, d I don't want to see things like that happening. Um, you know, I've seen certain things in the last couple of weeks that I'm not happy with, and those things need to be addressed between those parties. Yeah. You know, um... It's not an easy. It's not an easy fix, guys. You know, I'm I'm no. I'm, I'm going to put my hand up and say that. You know, but I guess what we've got to do is we've got to try and, you know, it's like a big pie. You just take it a bite at a time. I think it's like anything else, man. You hit the nail on the head earlier whenever you were talking. It's about getting in front of it and marketing and having more transparency because with that you'll get more patience and understanding whether it's from the player side of it or the fan side of it. And maybe WPA doesn't give a shit about it, and that's fine. You know, but then with that's going to come maybe on. Maybe you're feeling like it's unfair criticism. Well, you got no one to blame in my mind but yourselves unless you get in front of it and say, hey, listen, this is what we're trying to do. This is what we're hoping to accomplish. These are some of our hurdles, but these are our goals, you know? And, and I, feel, I feel like that's, that's where that balance has to come with. In fairness, you can't blame Stuart. No, I mean, no, 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 just, no. I, I'm not saying been, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just saying as, no. a, as a whole. You no, know? no. Look, <laughs> and I think, guys, look, there's, there's plenty of information that I have that I can't divulge. Of you course. know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd love yeah. to defend yeah. the WPA's position with my limited knowledge, but the, the, the point is I've got to be professional. I've got to be above... Um, oh, believe me, if I had a dollar for everything I can't say, Stuart. Yeah, there, there you go, there you go. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, there, there'll be yeah. plenty of times yeah. I could throw people under the bus and, course, it, wouldn't, yeah. and it wouldn't look good. But, how, but where's that going to get you? Correct. Right? So yeah. so really, it, it has to be done in, a, in, in an orderly fashion in the sense that it's fair and equitable for everyone, and you're hopefully going to, you know, you guys are you've got fans here, guys. Oh, no, I don't yeah. know what's going on, right. mate. A couple of them. It's a, it's, a, it's a Joey Ryan sighting, that's why. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh, yeah. okay, fair I enough. I don't get out that often. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> so, look, I, yeah, look, I, guys, I, I get what you're saying, um, you know, and obviously stepping in fairly quickly, you know, I wanted to give you guys an opportunity to have a chat to me because, you know, i got to let people know what we want to do. It's no, listen, we appreciate you. We respect you, you know, and, and I... You know, it was funny because Shane's message before and said, hey, I'm willing to come on and this is on the table, you know, and, and he's been open and transparent with us, whether it's, you know, off the record or on the record. And, you know, he's even we have uh, Ashan on, who's now the WPA president. We had him on before while yeah, uh, 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 before he, you know, took over that role. So there's at a, been at a, at a pretty tense time, too. He was willing to come it, on. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. And I think it was about a year ago, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, yep. um but, you know, listen, these are part of, like, steps of, of everything we're talking about. At the end of the day, I think fundamentally everybody wants the same things. It's hard getting everyone to work together sometimes, and you know, when you got egos or personalities or whatever the case may be. Well, and I think the shake-up, you know, I don't want to say shake-up in a bad way, but the, the turnover with the board and the new positions, I think that's a good thing, you know, and fresh set of eyes on it. Yeah, absolutely. I think it needs. I, I think it needs it. Like I said, scrape the barnacles off the ship, <laughs> yeah. and you know, and get going. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Well, Stuart, uh, this has been a great conversation. Really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Um, I just want to get a feeling for like your pitch that you would have for people to come play pool in Australia. Anything? I'm looking for a chance to get over there. Well, <clears throat> I've heard a rumor that there's going to be a new room opening up. Oh, yeah? And it's going to be pretty impressive. That's all I can say. Okay. Sydney? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, there's a few people that know about it, but not many. And uh, 
we'll talk about that maybe in a couple of weeks. Well, hey, best of luck with your table business. Best of luck with your tournament here and your performance and all you do for Australian Pool, as well as your new position with the WPA. Thanks, boys. Great having having me on.